you a story that they have designed for the stage. It started as a picture book. Many of you, in, as you've come to the music room, have seen that picture book on the ledge in front of the whiteboard, and you've been wondering what's gonna happen with this story. And today, you get to see the fifth grade version of that story. And the story is called The Mountain That Loved a Bird. And what the fifth graders had to do was figure out how they were going to make a stage version that includes original music, so they had to create and compose a lot of music together, as well as original art, which you'll see on this beautiful screen. That's how we're gonna tell our story today. So that sounds really simple. All you have to do is figure out a way to show a story on stage. What's the big deal? It's a lot harder than you think when you have to do it all together and make decisions together and brainstorm together and come to an agreement together. That might be the hardest one. So we had to work together in a lot of ways to create this story today. This is a story about, the fifth graders think it's a story about three things. They think it's a story about friendship, change, and hope. And at the end, I'm gonna ask you which one of those words do you think this story is most about? What is the theme or the main idea? So your choices are friendship, do you remember the second one? Change. And the third? Hope. Yeah, so we'll figure out which one you think best fits the story at the end today. So sit back and relax and get ready to enjoy The Mountain That Loved a Bird. Once there was a mountain made of bare stone. It stood alone in the middle of a desert plain. No plant grew on its hard slopes, nor could any animal, bird, or insect live there. The sun warmed the mountain and the cold chilled it, but the only touch the mountain knew was the touch of rain or snow. All day and all night, the mountain looked only at the sky, watching for the movement of the billowing clouds. It knew the path of the sun that crossed the sky by day and the course of the moon that crossed the sky by night. On clear nights, it watched the slow wheeling of the far off stars. There was nothing more to see. But then one day, a small bird appeared. She flew in a circle above the mountain, then landed on a ledge to rest and preen her feathers. The mountain felt the dry grasp of her tiny claws on the ledge. It felt the softness of her feathered body as she sheltered herself against its side. The mountain was amazed, for nothing like this had ever come to it from the sky before. Who are you? What is your name? I am a bird. My name is Joy, and I come from a distant land where everything is green. Every spring, I fly high into the air, looking for the best place to build my nest and raise my children. As soon as I have rested, I must continue my search. I have never seen anything like you before. Must you go on? Couldn't you just stay here? Birds are living things. We must have food and water. Nothing grows here for me to eat. 
There are no streams from which I could drink. If you cannot stay, will you come back again someday? I fly long distances and have rested on many mountains. No other mountain has ever cared whether I came or went, and I should like to return to you. But I could only do so in the spring, before I build my nest. And because you are so far from food and water, I could only stay for a few hours. Even if it were, if it were only for a few hours, it would make me happy to see you again. There is one thing you should know. Mountains last forever, but birds do not. Even if I were to visit you every spring of my life, there might only be a few visits. Birds do not live very many years. It will be very sad when your visits stop, but it would be even sadder if you fly away now and never return. Joy sat very still, still, nestled against the side of the mountain. Then she began to sing a gentle bell-like song, the first music the mountain had ever heard. make you a promise. Every spring of my life, I will return to greet you and sing to you. And since my life will not last forever, I will give to one of my own daughters my own name, Joy, and tell her how to find you. And she will name a daughter, Joy, also, and tell her how to find you. Each Joy will have a daughter, Joy, so that no matter how many years pass, you will always have a friend to greet you and fly above you and sing to you. The mountain was happy and sad. I still wish you could stay, but I'm glad you will return. Now I must go, for it is a long way to the lands that have food and water for me. Goodbye until next year. She soared off her wings like feathered fans against the sun. The mountain watched her until she disappeared into the distance. Year after year, when every spring came, a small bird flew to the mountain. For a few hours, the bird would fly above the mountain, singing. I am Joy, and I have come to greet you. At the end of each visit, the mountain never wanted the bird to leave. Isn't there some way you could stay? No, but I will return next year. Each year, the mountain looked forward more and more to Joy's visit. 
Each year it grew harder to watch her go. Ninety-nine springs came and went in this way. On the hundredth spring, the mountain watched as she disappeared into the sky. Suddenly, its heart broke. The hard stone cracked. And from the deepest part of the mountain, tears trickled forth and rolled down the mountainside in a small stream. The next spring, a small bird appeared. I am Joy, and I have come to greet you. This time, the mountain did not reply. It only wept, thinking of how soon she would have to leave and of all the long months before she would come again. Joy rested on her ledge and looked at the stream of tears. Then she flew above the mountain and sang as she always had. Return next year. When the next spring came, Joy returned, carrying in her beak a small seed. The mountain still wept a stream of tears. Joy carefully tucked the seed into a crack in the hard stone close to the stream so it would stay moist. Then she flew above the mountain and sang to it. Seeing that the mountain was still unable to speak, she flew away once more.
During the weeks that followed, the seed in the crack of the rock began to send down tiny roots. The roots reached into the hard stone, little by little spreading into yet smaller cracks, breaking through the hardness. As the roots found water in the cracks and drew food from the softening stone, a shoot rose from the seed into the sunlight and unfolded tiny green leaves. The mountain, however, was still deep in sorrow, blind with tears. It did not notice a plant so small. Years passed in this way, the roots of new plants softening the stone near the stream of tears. As softened stone turned to soil, moss began to grow in sheltered corners. Grasses and little flowering plants sprouted in the hollows near the stream. Tiny insects, carried to the mountain by the winds, scurried among the leaves. Meanwhile, the roots of the very first seed went deeper and deeper into the heart of the mountain. Above the ground, what had started as a tiny shoot was growing into the trunk of a young tree, its branches holding green leaves out to the sun. At last, the mountain felt the roots reaching down like gentle fingers, filling and healing the cracks in its heart. Sorrow faded away, and the mountain began to notice the changes that had been taking place. Seeing and feeling so many wonderful new things, the mountain's tears changed to tears of happiness. Each spring, joy returned, bringing another seed. Each year, the ground watered by the flowing stream 
grew green with trees and other plants. More years passed, and the stream carried life far out into the plains surrounding the mountain, until finally, as far as the mountain could see, everything was green. Watching living things find food and shelter on its slopes, the mountain suddenly felt a surge of hope. Opening its deepest heart to the roots of the trees, it offered them all its strength. The trees stretched their branches yet higher toward the sky, and hope ran like a song from the heart of the mountain into every leaf. And sure enough, when the next spring came, joy flew to the mountain, carrying not a seed, but a slender twig. Straight to the tallest tree on the mountain she flew, to the tree that had grown from the very first seed. She placed the twig on the branch on which she would build her nest. I am joy, and I've come to stay. While you're still clapping, let's give a round of applause for some of our voices. Can we recognize Hibba? <laughs> and Sonal? <laughs> Stella? <laughs> Athena? <laughs> Sophia? And a voice you may have recognized from back there. Hardly ever is she hidden behind the scenes. Mrs. Potters! <laughs> oh, so funny. Okay, we have a few people we need to thank as well. We need to thank Miss Reimer in the back in the booth. Thank you for everything. She built this beautiful screen and helped us do so many technical problem solving things to make that actually work back there because it is complete and total mayhem behind the screen. <laughs> it might not look like it here. Ms. Caruso, we have to thank her for filming, so let's do that. Mm -hmm. 